Welcome to another episode of Let's Be Perfectly Queer. On this episode, we're uh, looking back to Valentine's Day of 2020. So just uh, a little over a year ago when this group of amazing guests were with me at the Drawer Studio here in downtown Barrie for the very first Be My HIV Valentine event. Uh, unfortunately, um, the repeat of that event did not happen this year, thanks to uh, our dear friend, uh, Miss Corona. But hopefully we'll be able to, uh, to do it again next year. I actually, I actually thought about doing a, a virtual version of it, very similar to what Casey House is doing with Junes this year, but uh, I'll be quite honest, COVID has uh, really knocked the heck out of my mental health and I just didn't have it in me to, uh, to try and pull off a, a virtual event. And the success of last year was just so amazing that uh, I wanted to really, when we do it again, I want to do it again and do it right and, uh, and have folks in a room together. So please welcome my guest this evening. Uh, I'm going to start off with uh, the wonderful chef, Suzanne Barr. Thank you so much for joining us uh, this evening, Suzanne. Really appreciate you being here. I have missed that beautiful face. <laughs> Thank you for having me. It is an honor and pleasure to see all of your faces. Um, I'm actually at a friend's kitchen space, so we're doing some prep in the kitchen in the back so if you hear a little commotion it's just we're in the process of working but you know it's um it's weird to think that a year ago this week we were all running and prepping and chopping and cutting and and to be here now again and with you it's it's just an honor and i and i'm so grateful and it, it just really it brings me to tears just to remember how special that time was with you with you all well we certainly appreciate it um i've been uh, anxious to have you on the show ever since then, so I'm glad it's finally happened. And of course, my uh, my fellow chefs, Kelly Leader, Carla Evans, and my buddy Guy Bethel, thank you all for joining us on uh, on the show tonight. I'm going to start with uh, with my buddy Kelly, only because I know if there's any tears, we'll get them out of the way right now. <laughs> Kelly, this was this was a pretty, um, I mean, it was a big event for all of us, but I think. As I reminisce and look back, this was probably, if not the first, one of the first times that you really publicly um, shared your story and, and talked about the fact that you are a woman living with HIV. And I think it's particularly important now as we're right in the middle um, or coming out of the um, Love Positive Women campaign for, I think this is what, the eighth year that that initiative is, has been going. So talk to us a little bit about what Be My HIV Valentine meant to you and how, if any way, it uh, changed you? Uh, yeah, it meant a lot to me. Um, I felt very, um, I don't know, I had a lot of things come to me I, from the universe, things, plaques, um, just telling me that it's time. It's time that I open up about, about being HIV positive um, I tell my story. I don't let other people tell my story, and it and it is my story to tell. Um, so when when you come to me around this event, I was I questioned it, and if I was ready to actually publicly be open about it, and it was yes all the way. I sat on it a few days. I I meditated on it for a few days, but I knew I knew it was time. I knew it was time for me to be open and public, and it uh. It's been a ride. It's been amazing, though. It's been really good. Yeah. And love positive women. Yeah, definitely. Like, to do it on that back, on, on this backdrop, like right now, at the end of love, love positive women is just, is just amazing. Yeah. Yeah, you've, uh, you've certainly had, uh, had quite a journey over the last year. And I, I for one, have, have loved watching it. And I know it's only going to continue. You've been doing some amazing work in both the, the activism and advocacy <clears throat> end of, uh, of HIV and it's uh, it's certainly important work that you're doing and I've, I've told you this before you know every time you tell your story you're saving lives so kudos for you for that yeah guy what about you um, you've been involved in the uh, Casey House Junes eatery for uh, a couple of years I know you were part of the uh, the very first Junes eatery which is sort of where the inspiration for me my HIV Valentine came from so having you be part of this event as well was was wonderful to me and, and the fact that you know we're all folks who live in Simcoe Muskoka I think that was important so tell us 
what you uh, got out of the event and uh, and what you've been doing since. Well, um, let's also remember that June's the amazing event of it was was where we started our friendship. That's true. And, um, mm. So double bonus for me on that. And you know, re reflecting a year later, I still feel so good. Um, to bring this message to Barry of all places, um, small to conservative central Ontario is not where you would expect this. And we need to be bold and we need this message to be out there. And you, my friend, um, were a powerhouse in driving this, which you did pretty much single handedly. I know this was a, uh, a dream and a huge goal of yours. So kudos to you for pulling it off. Um, because when we did it at Casey House, there was a whole team and there were dedicated staff and there was all kinds of um, support um, and some amazing individuals involved. And, and then you brought in the ray of undiluted frigging sunshine superstar, <laughs> Suzanne, um, that brought us all together, that was very patient with us and very understanding and helped us have a good time with the whole thing. Just reflecting on that event and, um, you know, how long I've lived with HIV AIDS and seen the whole continuum um, evolve and to end up with something like this just felt so fulfilling and so gratifying and to share it with you amazing guys it was just the icing on the cake. So thank you. Yeah, it, it was absolutely wonderful. And I think it, it was it was important for me and and I was very grateful for the fact that, you know, thank you for what you said, but I absolutely, you know, did not do this on my own by any extent. Uh, I may have sort of had the spark of the idea um, thanks to to June's, but I could not have done it without the help of uh, of Mark Hill and uh, and Jane Clementi through uh, through Elevate. Um, certainly the folks at the Gilbert Center, um, Vive Healthcare and all of our other wonderful sponsors who uh, donated their their time and money for us to be able to actually put this together and of course yeah um being able to uh the coup was getting suzanne uh on board that was just and i, I i'll be honest I, I i had no clue who suzanne Barr was until it was suggested that you should reach out to to her and uh, i am so incredibly glad i did because i think we all feel that not only did we get a chance to to have a teacher in suzanne um, but I know I, I certainly feel I came away with a sister in Suzanne. And, and that's one of the things I really hate about COVID was that we had all these plans to, you know, get together and spend time together and, you know, have people over to, to my house here in the summer. And none of that has been able to happen. But I digress. Uh, when, when Guy was talking about, you know, the, uh, the sunshine, the person who brought the sunshine into the room, I knew he was talking about Suzanne, not about Carla. But uh, <laughs> I'll only say that, only say that because I love Carla to death. Uh, we teach one another like we are brother and sister. And uh, and Carla, I just want to hear from you your your experience with uh, with be my HIV Valentine. Um, I think it's wonderful that there's you know you and I who have, were diagnosed uh, relatively not that long ago, as opposed to you know Kelly and, and Guy sort of at the other end of the spectrum as long term survivors or, or thrivers. Um, and so just. Tell us a little bit about your experience with Be My HIV Valentine and, uh, and what it meant to you. Wow. Well, I was actually more intimidated about the cooking portion of it. <laughs> I'm one for cleaning, not so much the cooking. And um, it was it was fabulous. What, the work you did, it you could see the hard work that you put into it. Um, and having Suzanne there, that was that was really neat. It was something I've never done, nothing ever like that in my life. And uh, it was nice. And the, the the show of support from the community that were there. What did you say? There was 40, 48 people there. Yeah. yeah, that was that was crazy. And just to to get the word out in our community, I think it uh, I think it had a powerful impact. So I was really glad to be be a part of that. And again, being the newbie. Yeah, it's kind of nice to uh, just, you know, be involved as much as I can. It's really important to me to do that. And, and you talk about being a newbie as, as far as, you know, sharing mm -hmm. your story and, and you have that in common with Kelly is sort of mm -hmm. you had shared your uh, um, your story prior to 
be my HEB Valentine. But like Kelly, you've been doing a lot since. What what uh, what sort of work have you been doing within the community since be my HIV Valentine? Because I'm pretty sure you sit on a few different boards now too, do you not? Uh, yeah, I'm involved. I'm actively involved in um, the ICW North America International Committee of Women in, Women uh, North America, and I'm the treasurer, so I'm on a new board and getting getting used to the ropes there. Um, COVID put a lot of damper on a lot of activities that we had, and uh, trips and commit, you know, groups and forums and. Um, Unfortunately, I'm still involved quite a bit online and we have our monthly meetings, um, but other than that with COVID, without the Gilbert Center open and yeah, I haven't been as involved as, I, as I'd like to be, but still get my word out, <laughs> the word yeah. out. And I mean, uh, I, I saw quite recently uh, you shared your story uh, as part of the Love Positive Women campaign um, with the CPPN, the Canadian Positive People's Network, which I thought was wonderful mm -hmm. and you got to share the news even more publicly um, of your engagement. So congratulations yes. on that. Thank you. Back. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. All right, Suzanne, my love, Suzanne. COVID has not been kind to a lot of us. And I gotta say, um, when we finished up Be My HB Valentine and we sort of went our separate ways, I was so excited about what the future would hold and the idea of us being able to collaborate again on BMAHV Valentine for this year, obviously didn't happen. Um, but tell us a little bit about, again, your experiences with, uh, with BMAHV Valentine, what it, what it meant for you um, to be involved in that. And, uh, and tell us some of the story of uh, Suzanne Barr post BMAHV Valentine. I, I've watched you on your Wall of Chefs and uh, absolutely <laughs> love being there. You're muted. Oh, because you need to be. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we've got some, it's okay if there's kitchen clatter, it sort of goes with the show because we worked in kitchen clatter a year ago, right? So. This is true, this is true. <laughs> um, where do I start? Uh, gosh, you know, it's, I, I, I literally can remember uh, the first email that I received, which was the, 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 you know, just the initial engagement in the offer to come and to learn a bit about what was happening, what you guys were doing. And, um, you know, Stacy and I immediately were like, our heads popped up like, oh gosh, yeah. Like, you know, like for restaurants, it's a typical, it's the busiest, it's one of the busiest holidays of the year for restaurants. And um, I think for us, we were still quite new when we were ch challenged with a lot of different um, obstacles as being new and just trying to get the word out. But this opportunity for me, just because of how strong I support any advocacy um, in, in, you know, initiatives, that's, that's, I, I'm, I'm on it, you know, like that same month, you know, I was able to be with you all. And then I was then able to then be a part of uh, one of the huge fundraisers for an organization called Food Share. So it, it's, it's the, one of the big for me as a woman of color black people we like we get lit we get called upon a lot in february so it's there's that um the economy of like trying to decide what makes sense for my own conscious and also my 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 purpose in my being and everything about what uh you guys were doing that evening it sounded everything that I wanted to be a part of my own personal education and learning about HIV, um, what that means to live with it, you know, what that means to be a thriver, you know, someone that's thriving in a space that there's so much ignorance still to this day. You know, and I just feel like as a person of color, there's so many um, similarities that, that we share dealing with, you know, just the way people stigmatize, how they judge and how they um, just assume they know, but it's all based off of like mis <laughs> misinformation. And so that evening it was, for me, it, it wasn't just about a teaching opportunity, it was also about a learning opportunity. And those two pairings mm. are something that I'm always constantly looking for, an opportunity to learn and to teach and to absorb and to give and receive. And just that whole engagement, that that whole process is everything that I was a part of. And you know, listening to each one of your personal stories, getting to talk to each and one of you, working next to Kelly making the cake, working with Carla to really kind of get organized. Carla like kept me in order. She was like, this is where this needs to go. And we just 
you know, a guy taking me to, to see the area I'd never been to Barry before. And it was you know, my first time and it was definitely not my last time. I had got back returned from Barry telling my husband and Miles about how we're going to Randy's house for the summer and you know COVID did what it did and here we are now um you know we got back to the city COVID shut us down um maybe three months after that I um had to release a press statement about my partners in our restaurant had decided to close shop shut the restaurant down without any reason and purpose. And when we attempted to re to purchase the lease and the business, they uh, failed to give us that opportunity. And they said that was because they didn't want another restaurant in the space. And that to me was just another slap. And it was like another strike that people constantly try to keep us down much like, you know, you strong, amazing, incredible humans that I had a chance to work with, you know, these things try to knock us down and try to block us from doing and, and being in, this, in, in the elements and in the areas and, and creating those, those magical moments. And so I really shut down. Mentally, I broke down. I had already dealt with a version of this story before, and I was just tired. I was tired, everything in the news was exploding around Black Lives Matter. It was probably the worst, one of the worst moments in my life, to be honest, after you know having such a, a, an experience with you all. Um, but I learned a lot and looking at a year later, if someone were to ask me, could I expect to be where I am now? No, because I didn't know where I was going, where I was coming, I didn't know what was next. I didn't know how I was going to pay rent. I didn't know anything. I didn't understand why this was happening, the timing of it. But much like, you know, my experience working with you all, the hope, the desire to to to, to be and to, and to live and to love and to share, that always stuck with me. And that still is with me when I think about how when any moments of like, adversity comes up and I'm like, gosh, how can I get through this? And I think about all of your stories and I think about this, this companionship, this relationship that we built in three days, you know? And it was, it was, a, it was literally, truly, it was a gift. And it's still a gift to have you in my life. And even though we live not that far away, I know there'll be a time that we will unite once again and we will cook again together. You know, what, what she just said there was not knowing where you're going to be following a year after being my HIV Valentine. I almost broke down crying. I'm trying to keep it really in. I got my Kleenex, but I'm trying to keep it in. You know, that touched me. That, that just, you know, fast forwarded me from, from 2020 to 21 right now. And where I've gone and what I've done. And, the, the you know, I'm on the AIDS committee of, um, so the Ontario AIDS Network Advisory Committee advising the board. And I never thought I would be there. I never thought I could step forward and be open about being HIV positive and to get there, right? So I think it, it's all timing. The universe has it. I know they have it. I, I'm, I'm a true believer in what the universe will wants me to do, they'll give it to me. They'll put it on my plate. I'll sit with it. I'll do it. Right. So um, I just think like what just Susan said, like where, where I have come in my story in my life is, is amazing. I I'm just, I'm astonished at every time that, you know, I open my mouth and I, I blurb out something and I'm like, where did I get that from? Oh yeah. Okay. Now I, you know, I know the, you know, the four years that I've actually been involved in the Gilbert center, well, longer than that, but the four years I've been a, a client, a woman health coordinator and the education and the courses that I've been sent on and everything. And now I, I, and learning and listening to people and I'm picking myself up doing those things like stopping for a minute and, you know, getting my brain where I want to blurt out something and, and get it right. So I'm, I'm still learning, but I'm still, I'm still, I'm still moving forward one step at a time and one committee at a time and one mentorship at a time. And, you know, someone reaches out and says, Hey, if you need some help, just, you know, text me. And I'm like, okay, I got your number. Now you're going to, you know, I'm going to text you all the time. So it's, and, and it's, and it's women, it's skating me 
inside powerful women and they're mentoring me. And then I can also mentor the, my next people behind me. Right. So I think it's just, it's amazing. The, the road's been amazing. So tell us more, Suzanne, about, um, about what you've been doing these days and, and where the road's been taking you. I have to thank COVID for a couple reasons. It gave me my family back. Mm. It gave me my marriage back, you know, like real talk. Like I really don't know how, how people juggle all the things that we did before COVID because it just feel, it felt like just you're going through the motion. Whereas this has physically made you sit down and think, and, you know, you know, my, my prayers go out for the many family and individuals that have lost folks during this time. But I really do have to just give thanks for this time that I have been able to share and, and, and embrace with my family and my, and my partner you know, and like finding a way to express ourselves, finding a way to find joy and the little easy, you know, things in our life, whether it's going out for a walk and exploring new parks, and exploring different parts of my side that of myself that I didn't even know about. And, you know, dreaming again, dreaming about the possibility of whatever I want to be doing and whom I want to inspire, who I want to be inspired by, where I want to go. I mean, when I came on the call with you guys today, I had the beach in the background that because I'm dreaming about the beach. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm in still in these streets in Toronto and it's cold as hell and I'm ready to get up out of here. But <laughs> I digress. <laughs> I hear you. But I, I am so grateful. There is so much gratitude and there is so much um, just life that is still meant to live. And I'm just, I'm willing and able. And I, and I, and I stand up. And I'm standing. Yeah. And I think you're right. I think COVID, while it's it's taken a lot from us, I think you're right. It's it's given a lot, and for me at least, a lot of that is is perspective and uh, and being able to prioritize things that uh, maybe you didn't realize were quite as important as as they really are, and and realize that all that time that we spend uh, away from our families is a time that you know you, you don't get back, and uh, to not be able to miss that now is. Wonderful. When, when you talked about uh, the dance party and stuff, I, I can't help but think of conversations I overheard with, with you and Guy while we were doing uh, Be My HB Valentine. And, and Guy, talk to us a little bit about some of those <laughs> conversations you and Suzanne had around music. And, and I know that's how you two really connected. Go for it, Guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What were we listening to reggaeton? Was it reggaeton? No, man, you were playing like Masters at Work. You were playing like UK Two Step House Soul Music. Okay, <laughs> Gospel House. Yes, yes. <laughs> Danny Tanisha. You know, like we, yeah, we connected on on our love for house music, Gospel House, and I just was, yeah, very excited. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. Good. And and Carla, what about you? There, I know. Uh, you and Suzanne sort of connected around uh, organizing and, and cleaning. Uh, <laughs> My poor day. <laughs> it was a lot. <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. That was a lot of learning, a lot of fun. And yeah, I'm still not cooking. I get Hello Fresh, so I don't have to do anything. <laughs> you, you can watch that. COVID has not changed my online, cooking though. ability. What's I love it. Suzanne has done some tutorials online and on her Instagram has got some recipes that you could uh, try out. That oh, I'll quite, check it out. Yeah, She's, she's like, no, it's okay. Yeah, I'll look. I'm not going to promise. I'll look. Saying, but I'll watch. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, we're, we're getting close to that time and I knew this was going to happen, that I'd get uh, a message from, from my wonderful producer, Deanne, that we were running behind and running out of time. So I need to uh, go around the room here to each of you and just get a quick little uh, wrap up of how you're feeling and, uh, and any last comments you might want to have. So Kelly, we started with you. We'll uh, go to you for, uh, for that question as well. Final thoughts. Uh, thank you for doing this, Randy. I, I think I had emailed you a while back, like, hey, are we going to have a reunion party even if on Zoom? Um, I was so looking forward to this. And when I seen the email, and I'm like, yes, it's happening. I get to see everybody. Um, yeah, I just think I'm inspired um, about being open now. Um, and like Carla, I did the CPPN, and it's on YouTube, and you can check it out. It's my story. Um, there's a lot more to it. It's been 36 years. So, 
it's a it's a wrap up of my story. So I'm just inspired. That's all. Guy, final thoughts? Um, I just want to pick up on some of the things that Suzanne said um, about how COVID has affected us in the last year. It's made us pause. Our lives are getting faster and faster, social media, smartphones. Um, I think one of the biggest impacts has been on people's mental health. That's been one of the negatives. But one of the positives has made us stop, pause, and question what's truly valuable in our lives. And it's all about living in the moment. And if you're an HIV survivor, that's very, it's critically important. And Be My HIV Valentine gave us an opportunity to live in the moment. And while June's was on a, a bigger scale, whatever, blah, 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 it was the first, um, you or maybe we, I think, topped it in one way. Um, in the logistics and the setup, uh, Draws was just a fabulous location. And it was one big table. It's all about building bigger tables, not walls. And the setup was that we could cook right there in front of them and be connected. And it was just so intimate. And um, yeah, just that just blows my mind thinking. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. Carly, you've got about 30 seconds to give your final thoughts, my dear. Oh, super, because I have not. No, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> No, um, I, I agree with all of those comments. I do. I'm, I'm not happy about COVID, but it has had time to reflect and slow down, which has been nice because I realized, um, you know, that I have to look after myself. And yeah, I was kind of spinning out of control working 60 hours a week. And so I've slowed right down probably to like 20. So now when I'm not working, I eat. <laughs> but I don't cook. I eat. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be clear. And Suzanne, <laughs> uh, again, final thoughts and words. Uh, quick, fast. Uh, I did every every comment um, that we just heard, and um, and to add to that, just you know, re resiliency is huge. It just comes up continuously. I think we need that. We need some some positive affirmations for what will be the, the, you know, a new year ahead that we don't really know where it's going to lead us. But I do believe that if we continue to build community and continue to build tables and spaces for, for mm -hmm. folks like us that understand the importance of, of, you know, sharing your story, then I think we have, we have a, a, an incredible road ahead of us. And, and I, and I'm truly thankful once again for, for this opportunity. I couldn't have said it better myself. Uh, Thank you all. Uh, we've, we've gone over, so I know Deanne's going to have some more editing to do to get this done. Time. But, uh, you know, I, I could talk to you, to you all for hours anyway. So maybe we'll do this again and have, a, have another show and just talk about other stuff. But uh, I just want to start by saying thank you, thank you, thank you to each and every one of you for taking part in Be My HV Valentine last year and for being part of the show tonight. And thank all of you for watching another episode of Let's Be Perfectly Queer.